YouTube, it's Taco Kel. Welcome to my new segment called Dying the Dead. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be staining the bones and cartilage of a few specimens that I've collected through the process of diaphanization. Diaphanization is also known as clearing and staining. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be clearing the specimens, so we're going to kind of render them very transparent, and we're going to be staining their bones and their cartilage two different colors with a few different chemicals that I have. If you've never seen a diaphanized specimen, here's some pictures of a few diaphanized specimens that I found online. Doesn't that look so cool? <laughs> At the end of this process, since the specimens are very transparent, diaphanization gives us this awesome window into their skeletal structure. This process was developed by two scientists by the names of Dinger and Oller in 1977. So this process has been around for a really long time. A lot of people don't really know about it because it's kind of... weird science. <laughs> Here are some of the chemicals and items that you're going to be needing in order to diaphanize or clear and stain any specimen that you have. First, you're going to need specimens. These are just a couple of gourmet rodents that I bought at the pet store, or my local pet store. You can buy your specimens live or frozen, it's your choice. They come in packs of one or three or maybe six depending on what store you find them from. I bought two adult mice and they are frozen. If you buy frozen specimens, you're going to have to let the specimen or specimens sit out and thaw until they are room temperature and not frozen anymore. This is one gallon of formalin. This is what you're going to be using to fix your specimens or to preserve them so they don't start decaying through the process of clearing and staining. This runs about 30 to 40 dollars, maybe up to 50 or 60, depending on where you can get this from. You're gonna need some glacial acetic acid 99%. I bought this off the internet, I bought a gallon of it, and it came in four liter bottles like this. Ethanol, 95% or 95 ethanol or ethyl alcohol is another substance and chemical that you're gonna want to use. I had trouble finding this online, I had trouble getting it shipped to any residential area, but I eventually found a place that'll do it. Potassium hydroxide. I bought these in little flakes. Borax. This is also known as sodium borate. This can be found at any local store that sells detergents and soaps and things. Hydrogen peroxide. Distilled or deionized water. Thymol. This is used as an antifungal in the glycerin in order to prevent any growth once we store our specimens. Glycerin. This can be found in the medic medication aisle in any stores. I couldn't find anything bigger. It was kind of very pricey online, but unless you're storing a very large specimen, you don't really need that much if you're using vials or small jars and things like that. Trypsin. Trypsin is a digestive enzyme. I bought this locally at a science store. It ran about $40. This is a very important chemical and you absolutely need this in order to clear your specimen. So what this is going to do is this is going to render our specimen transparent. This is what's slowly going to be breaking down the flesh and muscles of the specimens that we have that we are clearing and staining. In order to dye the bones, you're going to need alizarian red S powder. The alizarian red is what's going to be producing the red tint to the bones. As they say online, a little alizarin goes a long way. In order to stain the cartilage, you're going to need alcyon blue. I bought five grams of this. This was actually very expensive. I couldn't find it in store, so I had to order it offline. This will be turning the cartilage a very nice blue color. Since this process works with a bunch of hazardous chemicals, you don't want to breathe any of that in. You don't want to get it splashed in your eyes. So you're going to want some goggles. You can get these at... Home Depot at probably Lowe's, you can order them online, or if you're a college student, you probably have a couple pairs of these from the science labs like organic chemistry, chemistry. You just want to protect your eyes from any of the hazardous chemicals that may splash into your face because it wouldn't be good to get those in any of the parts of your body. As we are touching and going to be using dead specimens, you always want to make sure that you are wearing gloves. These came in a box like this of 200 sterile gloves. These are just your standard examining gloves. I did not get them with the powder. I felt that even though it helps your hands not to become sweaty, it leaves a really nasty smell that I just don't like. So I decided to go with non-powdered gloves. 
You may also want to pick up or buy and purchase a surgical kit or type of anatomy kit that has scalpels, tweezers, and little stirs and clips and things like that. We will be needing the tweezers and scalpels all quite a bit in order to remove the organs from our specimens, in order to skin, in order just to make sure that all of the parts that we need skinned are off. You don't need one as big as this. You could probably get away with a few scalpels and some surgical or medical tweezers. You're going to need some type of plate. Maybe you have a dissection tray. I don't have one of those, so I just use plates. They're easier to clean up. And I can just wipe it off, put it in a bag, and throw it away. This is optional. You don't have to get these, but you may really want to. I ordered a set of five graduated cylinders in varying sizes. So they range from 100 milliliters down to five. And here's the 100 milliliter. 50, 25, 10, and five milliliters. You're definitely going to need jars or containers. I've been saving all of my glass jars for the past few months and what you can do is you can either remove the labels or leave them on. I like to use glass containers. I feel that they don't, you know, soak in the chemicals after a while. And I'm not using Tupperware or any type of Ziploc containers in my kitchen because once you use those you cannot put them back in your kitchen because they would not be safe to eat out of. You're also going to want to buy a little scale. This is a pocket scale. It can measure to 0 0.01 grams, and I need something that measured in milligrams, but there wasn't anything that I could find, so I didn't want to like spend a few hundred dollars online to buy like a milligram scale, so I just bought one that measured in grams. If you 0 0.01 grams is equal to 10 milligrams. So I kind of know the conversions for that, so I can just kind of eyeball it after a while once I start measuring. I would also like to thank one of my very good friends, Ashton, who I worked in the lab with while I was in school, who also has been like a mentor. He's been helping me out with finding information about diaphanizing, finding chemicals, and getting a hold of some of the things. So thank you so much. I would also like to thank Ross Exton, who is the video producer for At Bristol Science Center. He's been giving me some really great advice and tips on how to get the channel started, on naming the series that I'm doing, and just making it fun for you guys, making it fun for me so we can all learn together. Don't forget to check out the At Bristol Science Center channel. They have a lot of videos about dissection and just different science projects that are really fun and awesome for you guys to look at. So what I'm not going to be filming is I'm not going to be filming fixing the specimen in formalin. That you can kind of do on your own time because it does take a little bit of time depending on the size of the specimen. First you have to thaw your specimen if you bought it frozen. You have to skin it, remove all of the organs including the eyes, and then you're going to put it in your formalin solution. For small specimens, you're going to make 100 milliliters of solution using 70 milliliters of formalin and 30 milliliters of water. You're just going to want to leave that in there for a few days and then we can get started on preparing our specimen for clearing and staining. There will be a full list down in the description to so be sure to check that out and to read the description also because that is where the list of chemicals will be. There will also be links to where I bought some of the chemicals online. So you may also want to check those out if you are interested in doing something like this. Don't forget to thumb up and subscribe to my channel to see more of my series, Dying the Dead. This is quite a lengthy journey and there will be videos all the way throughout it. There will be videos when I finish, pictures and everything. So please, please, please subscribe and be on the lookout for more videos. Bye guys!